Okay, hello Starlight. I'm getting ready to um bring to you the Sunday School lesson for the week of February 7th, Lesson 10. And the title of our lesson is Jesus' Claim to Deity. We have two outlines of this lesson. The lesson text is coming from John, the 8th chapter, verses 48 through 59. Um, and the golden text reads, Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, before Abraham was, I am. And that's John 8 and 58. Um, we have two outlines. The first outline is accused of demonic influence. That's John chapter 8, 40, verses 48 through 53. And accused of lying. And that's John 8, 54 through 59. Um, I'm going to read just a little bit that I got from the, the introduction. I didn't want to read the whole thing. But it was just one part of the introduction that I thought was, that I thought, um, you know, we should hear. Um, it says, when we look at Jesus' life, we find many who were unable to accept him for who he really is. Instead, therefore, he became the object of many unnecessary accusations as he declared the truth. But he truly did have answers for life's problems. I'm going to whisper a word of, word of prayer and I'm going to get into the lesson. Thank you, Lord, for this day, God. Thank you for blessing us, Lord, letting us see a day which we've never seen before and a day which we would never see again. Lord, I pray that we, we do and have done all to bring glory to your name, Lord God. I pray that this lesson teaches us to help, help helps us to understand that we need to learn to listen to God and to listen to Jesus, what Jesus is trying to tell us. And I pray that this lesson um, helps someone understand what it is Jesus is trying to um teach us today now may the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight O lord my strength and my redeemer in jesus name i pray amen okay um we had like well last week's lesson um, um also coming from john the eighth chapter was jesus um when he was talking to the jews jesus was um saying talking about him being the light of the world and we do know that Jesus is the light of the world. And anyone who um, walks with him should not walk in darkness. Um, and now we have Jesus' claim to deity. And here we have some accusers. These Jews accused Jesus of some of some, some terrible things. And um, they it was just impossible for them to know who, who he was and who he is. Because to accuse him of the things they accused him of was, was awful. But you know them being carnal, they didn't even um, have the have an idea of who they really you know who Jesus was and who you know what who they were talking to. So I'm going to start off with the first um, outline, which is accused of demonic influence, and that has to be something to accuse Jesus of a demonic influence of all people. Jesus being influenced with a demonic, um, being influenced by a demon, um, that's absurd. But it's coming from verses 48. Um, through 53 then answered the jews and said unto him say we not well that are a samaritan and has the devil jesus answered i have not a devil but i honor my father and you dishonor me and i seek not my own glory there is one that seeketh and judgeth verily verily i say verily verily i say unto you if a man keep my sayings he shall never see death then said the Jews unto him, Now we know that thou hast a devil. Abraham is dead, and the prophets, and thou sayest, If a man keep my sins, he shall never taste of death. Art thou greater than our father Abraham, which is dead, and the prophets are dead, whom makest thou thyself? That That's absurd. Um, just end of the whole conversation that they're having with Jesus. Because this, this literally lets you know that they don't know who Jesus is, which is really sad. And they are the religious leaders. Um, those are the Jews, the religious leaders who you who claim to know God. And it's like you claim to know God, but you don't even know who Jesus is. That says a lot about your claiming to know God. That means you really don't know God. Um, so we start out by them dishonoring Jesus. And the conversation Jesus was having with the Jewish religious leaders became increasingly in intense. The Jews resorted to name calling. And you know it had to be something for them to resort to name calling. And then the, the name, the, the kind of, you know, things that they were saying was you're demon possessed and things like that. Um, 
this is all always evidence that someone has run out of an out of intelligent logic of an intelligent logical argument. It is a descent into a mere expression of angry feelings with no self control. The thinking processes have ceased. Instead of pursuing truth, they merely lashed out at Jesus. So instead of listening to him, taking the time to listen to him, to what he was saying, they lashed out with with these these vicious words. Um, that they were saying to Jesus, which didn't make any sense. And, and, and you know, it's like sad to, that someone is trying to teach you something, just trying to show you light, and you want to reject the light just because you want to always be the one to claim to know the truth. With no way left to refute what Jesus was saying, the Jews resorted to attacking him personally. They accused him of being a Samaritan and being demon-possessed. So, you know, it was two things they accused him of. Of being a Samaritan, because you know the Jews did not like the Samaritans. Um, they accused him of being a Samaritan. Now Jesus didn't really, you know, say anything about being accused of being a Samaritan. But when he was accused of being demon, he wasn't having it. Now he responded to that, and his, you know, he just let them know that he is not, you know, uh, influenced or possessed by a demon. So Jesus did respond to their charge of having a demon. This is one of several times that um, he was accused of having a demon or at least operating under the power of demons. Jesus did everything in order to glorify his father in heaven. And that would have been impossible under the power of a demon. A demon is not going to um, honor God. We know that. So that so for them to say that, then they, they, you don't, they, didn't, they can't know, know God for them to even say that. Um, Jesus is, um, what he came to do was to honor his father. And, um, he, you know, and he was just saying he was not exalting himself, only the father. So he was letting them know, I'm not even exalting myself. I'm exalting the father. I'm here to honor the father. Their attack on him was dishonoring, which in turn was dishonoring to the father. Throughout this conversation, he had been associating himself with the father. And he now declared that same bond with the father once, once again. As long as they denied him and his message, they were denying Yahweh himself. Yahweh, I am. Yahweh. Um, this was far more serious than merely, um, you know, just denying Yahweh himself um, was just the utmost disrespect or um, dishonor that they could give, you know, that they were giving Jesus. And Jesus was just letting them know, I'm here to honor my father, but you are not honoring him and you are not honoring me. Um, verse 51, Verily, verily, I say unto you, if, if a man keep my sins, he should never see death. And they, of course, took that the wrong way. Um, I'm going to go back. Verse 48, Then they, then answered the Jews and said unto him, Say we not that thou was a Samaritan and the, um, and the devil. That's when they, um, the accusations, that's what they accused him of being. One a Samaritan and one a devil. And Jesus told him, he said, I have not a devil. He said, I'm here I'm here to honor my father. But I honor my father and ye dishonor me. So he's just letting them know, I honor my father, but you're dishonoring me. He says, and I seek not my own glory. This is one that seeketh and judges. So he's saying, I'm not seeking my own glory. My own um, glory. He said, the one there, there is one that seeketh and judges. Verily, verily, I say unto you, if a man keeps my saying... He should never see death. And so what he was saying to them, it's not talking about physical death. Of course, we know he's talking about spiritual death. But because they don't really know God and don't know who Jesus is, for one, they don't know how to listen to God. So, of course, they can't hear anything God is trying to, to say to them. So what he's um he's saying here is um, he's just very, very, truly, truly. He's saying, I'm telling I'm telling you the truth. He, should, he says, if a man keeps my saying, he, will, he shall never see death. And what he was talking about was spiritual death, total separation from God. That's what he was trying to get them to see, and that's what they needed to see. Um, Jesus had no need to justify himself. He was not trying to gain fame or glory for himself, but the Father sought glory for the Son. And he was not trying to gain glory for himself, but the Father sought to honor the Son. He sought glory for the Son. And he would judge people according to their stance towards him. Jesus was not bothered by what people thought about him personally, but he did everything for the approval of his father. So Jesus wasn't really concerned about what they thought about him. His um, Jesus was here to honor the father and to glorify the father, to bring glory to the father and to bring honor to the father. So it wasn't about what they thought about him. 
He said his main focus was to bring honor to the Father. He, I'm here for a certain reason. I came to do the will of my Father, and that's all he came to do, and that's all he wanted to do was honor his Father. Um, Jesus, um, he wanted to honor his Father, and Jew, the Jews were um, on dangerous ground by making these kinds of accusations that they were, um, you know, that they were hurling at Jesus. You know, but but they didn't get it. You know, people people who don't have a um, a sense of understanding who God is, they don't really have a conscience um, of really understanding the um, kind of trouble that they're really in by rejecting who Jesus is. Then Jesus told them that anyone who receives His word in faith would would never see death. And see, they didn't understand what He was talking about. He's and and the use of verily verily, um, it was a warning to the Jews that they needed to pay close attention. When he says, verily, verily, truly, truly, he's trying to get your attention. So what he's saying is, listen to me. Listen to what I'm saying to you. He said, if you keep my sayings, if you believe in me, you would never see death. And they didn't understand it was not talking about physical death. He was talking about spiritual death. Spiritual death is way worse than physical death. Physical death, if you are saved, then you know you will be with God forever. But if you die without him... You would totally be separated from God forever. So he was trying to get them to see that it's not the physical death that I'm talking about. I'm talking about the spiritual death. But they were too angry and too ignorant to understand and see what he was trying to say. Well, you know, um, when you think about it, have you ever seen um, leaders who are, are unteachable? They think they know it all. They think they have all the answers, which is really sad. Because if you're a leader and you say you're a leader, um, you know, you're one of God's people. And you don't even know who God is, but you say you do. But your actions show different. It's a problem. There's a major problem with them. And um, that's what's going on here. These Jews were so, you know, hung up on what they wanted to believe and just wanted to be so mad at Jesus and, you know, so angry till they couldn't even see. Their anger blocked out um, who they really to need, needed to see Jesus, who he, who he really is. Then Jesus told them that anyone who receives his word in faith would never see death um and he was warning them to to just pay attention to listen to what i'm saying he says because this is a matter of life and death for you if you listen to me this is a matter of life and death and that's all he wanted them to see but of course they you know were just too angry and too ignorant to um just want to really listen to, to what he was saying he had already warned them that they would they would die in their sins because of their unbelief he said, but this was an opportunity for them to change that. When God um, is presented, when Jesus is presented to people, that's your opportunity to change and accept him. You, you, won't, you don't have to die in your sins. You can accept Jesus Christ and you can live um, in him and, and you can live and you won't see death, which is total separation from God. We're talking about spiritual death here. They did not um, need to die in their sins, but it would be necessary for them to believe in the truth of his teachings to avoid dying in their sins. And that's how it is for each and every sinner today. If you have not accepted Jesus Christ, um, you do not need to die in your sins. It would, be, um, it would be good for you or necessary for you to believe in the truth um, of God's teachings, of Jesus' teachings to avoid that um, spiritual death. The Jewish leaders um, were at much more critical juncture than they realized. Jesus was presenting himself as the one sent by the Father um, with the words of eternal life. Their rejection or acceptance of his truth would determine their eternal destiny. But their hearts were so hard that they could not understand what he was saying. Rather, they were determined to just continue to discredit Jesus, which is the saddest thing um, anyone can do. Their prejudice, their prejudices, their prejudice, prejudice, um, did not allow any room for their thinking to, of receiving him, which is so sad because it's like we live in a world today where people just do not want to believe in God because people want to continue to live in their sins. They want to continue to just live any kind of way. So they don't want to have any parts of God, which is really sad. This is the state of much of the world today. The truth is repeatedly given in church service at the church service in evangelistic meetings on television broadcast and through personal testimony shared by God's children. Increasingly, however, we find that the hearts have been become 
have become so hardened against the gospel that there is a complete lack of acceptance. At the same time, we must continue to share the good news because there are still many who will respond in true faith. All heaven rejoices over each and every one. So we still need to be about our Father's business. Just like Jesus came to honor the Father, we are here to honor Jesus and honor the Father and to be about his business. Um, verses um, 52 and 53. Then Jesus um, then said the Jews unto him, no, we, no, we, Now we know that thou hast a devil. Abraham is dead, and the prophets. Thou sayest that if a man keep my sayings, he shall never taste death. After, um, art thou greater than our father Abraham, which is dead, and the prophets are dead? Whom, um, who makest thou thyself? You know, and they're asking, asking him this question, you know, like, um, he's saying, if you keep my sins, he should never see death. So what are you saying? Um, Abraham is dead. So he died, you know, but they would understand it's not talking about physical death. It's talking about spiritual death. Um. At this point, the Jews were even more convinced that Jesus was demon possessed. His claim to have his claim that anyone who kept his word would not see death did not align with what they thought to be facts because they were thinking in the physical. Their main point was that their celebrated father Abraham was dead. To them, this proved that Jesus was teaching falsehood from a demonic source. And um, they once again thought only in physical terms, like I said before. Thus, they were again unable to comprehend the meaning of Jesus' teaching. It's really sad. Not only um, Abraham, but all the other prophets in the Old Testament were dead as well. The Jewish leaders therefore interpreted Jesus' claims as saying that Abraham and all the prophets had failed to obey his word. So in other words, what they were saying is that, um, that Abraham and all the other prophets, if they're dead, then they didn't obey. Um, they didn't keep um, his saying. That's not what he was talking about. But that's the way that the Jews interpreted it, which is uh, really sad. And I'm, I'm reading a book on how to listen to God, and it's a really good book. And this is something that we need to do. We need to learn to listen to God. When God is talking, we need to learn to listen and stop trying to um, have our own interpretations of what the Bible is saying. Stop trying to live our own way. If the Bible tells us to live one way, we need to live the way God tells us to live and stop trying to live contrary to that and then make it. Um, try to make it right. It's not right. We need to be obedient to God and live the way God tells us to live. We cannot continue to just do what we want to do and we say we know God, we love God. It just does not work that way. Um, I'm going to move on to... um, I'm going to read this little bit from the expositor. Jesus had repeatedly explained that he was not exalting himself but only his Father. He was doing the works and speaking the words that his Father had given him. The religious leaders, however, were unable to get past their envy and their theological prejudice. Since they were unwilling to receive the truth he had come to deliver from God the Father, their minds and their hearts remained closed. They were unable to accept his testimony, and that's a sad indictment. Do not let your minds and your hearts be closed to the gospel, to the word of God. Um, Please do not die in your sins. Accept him, believe his word. Um, get into the get into the word, get into the Bible, and understand what it is that Jesus is trying to let us know. He is the only way, and we need to um, accept and believe His teachings, trust His word, and just continue to live and continue to share the word with those who you know are out there that don't know Him. I'm going to um, go to the second outline: accused of lying, um, G- verses fifty-four through um, I think. It's- yeah, 54 through 59. Jesus answered, Jesus answered, If I honor myself, my honor is nothing. It is my Father that honors me, of whom ye say that he is your God. Yet ye have not known him, but I know him. And if I should say I know him not, I should be a liar like unto you. But I know him and keep his sayings. Your father Abraham rejoiced to see my day, and he saw it and was glad. Then said the Jews unto him, Thou art not Thou art not fifty yet, fifty years old, not yet fifty years old, and hast thou seen Abraham? Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, saying this again, Verily, verily, listen, guys, truly, truly, listen, listen. He's saying, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Before Abraham was, I am. He said, Then then took they up the stones to cast at him. Jesus 
But Jesus hid himself and went out of the temple, going through the midst of them, and so passed by. And and so passed by. So here, um, Jesus is God Himself. After Abraham had claimed that a after Jesus had claimed that Abraham um, rejoiced to see him, that's when the Pharisees got indignant. Oh, they were upset. It's like time to kill him, get rid of him. So now they they are all upset. But see, the thing is, if they really knew who God is, they would they would not be acting the way they are. But see, that's how um how a sinful person acts. They're angry, they're evil, and they only seek they only seek evil. They seek to do harm and evil to people instead of trying to find out the truth and to love, you know, um those, you know, like we're supposed to that we're supposed to. So again I said they were only thinking in physical terms, which is really sad, um, instead of seeing what Jesus was trying to say. I he told him before, I'm the light of the world. Um, but you know, of course they just don't want to hear. So here we see, um, honored by the Father, and this is John fifty four and fifty five. Jesus said, If I bear witness of myself, my witness is not true. At that time he explained that other witnesses also testified to the authority of his mission. One of those was John the Baptist, but um, but there were witnesses even greater than John. Now, in chapter 8, Jesus speaks, speaks of honor in, in his personal testimony. He never sought to honor himself, and that's what he keeps telling him. I'm not even here to honor myself. I'm here to honor the Father. And if you say you know God and I'm here to honor God, then why do you have a problem with me? Because they were too angry and too indignant, too ignorant to understand what Jesus was trying to tell them. For anyone to honor themselves is normally to be taken. Uh, well, you know, they anyone to honor themselves, of course, to honor yourself, you're not even seeking to honor the person who has sent you. You're seeking just to honor yourself, which is kind of um, self-satisfaction, if you, you know is what I'm saying. Just seeking self, self-satisfaction. The leaders claim um, Jesus' father was their God. You claim that's your God, Jesus, but Jesus said, you don't even know him. You claim that you're God, but you don't even know him. Jesus knew him well. However, if he claimed not to know the Father, then he would be a liar just like them. But he did not claim that. He would then be a liar like them. He was referring to their claim to know God while everything they said and did betrayed the truth that they did not know him at all. So Jesus' ch charge against them was pretty much saying that you guys are just pretty much rank unbelievers. So that's what Jesus was just telling them. The proof Jesus offered of his true knowledge of the Father was his obedience to him. That's how we offer, um, how we how we honor God, be, by being obedient. We honor Jesus by being obedient. We need to, to be obedient to his word. Just live the way God tells us to live. I know him and keep his sayings, verse 55. He was implying that the proof of their unbelief was their was their dis disobedience to the Father's word. So that's your, that's your proof. Your proof of unbelief is your disobedience to the Father's word. This right here, I was reading this, and it just, this right here says, many talk as if they know God, but their lives demonstrate no obedience to him. I'm going to read that again. Many talk as if they know God, but their lives demonstrate no obedience to him. How is your life? What does your life demonstrate? If your life demonstrates no obedience to God, you don't know him. You can't know him. We cannot continue to say we know God, love God, we live for God, and our lives contradict that. I mean, when people see you, what do they see? What kind of lives are you living? Um, we have to be who we say we are. If we're going to be Christians... You know, what? how does God tell us to live? We have to be obedient to him. We can't continue to just live any kind of way and say we know God. So the thing is, these were religious leaders. They said they knew God, but it was all evidence that they didn't. So, But Jesus had to come and show them that. So the thing is, when we read the word, is Jesus showing us that we don't really know God? We've got to be careful. So we need to, we need to honor God. We need to honor Jesus. Verse um, 56, 57... And it, it says, 56, 57, your father Abraham rejoiced to see my day and he saw it and was glad. Then the Jews said unto him, thou art not 50, yet 50 years old 
and thou hast seen Abraham. So he's saying, he was like, yo, your father Abraham rejoiced to see me. And they're like, you not even 50 years old. And you saw Abraham thinking in the physical. Here we go again. But they were mad. They were so angry when Jesus said that. Oh, God. And then he, Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Before Abraham was, I am. When he made that statement that I am, the claim I am, he's saying I am God. Because that's that's the same thing that God told Moses when Moses um, God sent Moses to the people. And then God, Moses asked God, well, who, who should I tell him sent me? God said, I am that I am. So in that statement, they know that um, the I am is God, Yahweh. And so here Jesus is saying, I am God. And of course, that made them angry. Then they took up the stones to cast at him. But Jesus hid himself Jesus, because it wasn't his time yet. So Jesus hid himself and went out of the temple going through the midst of them. And so he passed by. So Jesus, he went, went by them, got past them. Because, you know, um, no man takes my life. I lay it down. That's what Jesus said, you know. Of course, you know, um, blasphemy was one of the reasons for being stoned to death. And, of course, they were trying to say that Jesus was blaspheming, but they didn't understand that Jesus was letting them know who he is. Um, you know, for this right here, I'll read this. For this, for this, um, this was the last straw. They believed that he was blaspheming, so they determined to kill him. And that's when they took up the stones and to kill him. I'm going to read a few um practical points from my lesson which i thought was was good so i want you to take these practical points you know and um hopefully you can i don't know if you have time to write them down but hopefully these practical points will help you um number one the true believers will praise god for who jesus is and what he has done in their lives john 8 48 through 51 um People who hate Jesus will often justify their hatred by making him into some something evil. And that's exactly what these, these Jews did. A knowledge of God will lead to a proper knowledge of who Jesus is. And that is so true. If you know God, then you would know who Jesus is. If we know God, we would demonstrate it by obeying him and rejoicing in his son. Jesus is the eternal God. The second person of the Trinity. And the last practical point is, as God, as God in the flesh, Jesus was made um, complete. In, I'm sorry. As God is in the flesh, Jesus was in complete control of his earthly destiny. And he is also in control of ours. So I pray that this lesson helped you. Let's continue to be obedient to God's word, to listen to God. Learn to listen to God. Um, we need to listen to God. We need to know um, what God is saying to us. We need to be obedient. Let's um, honor God. Let's honor Jesus. And let's continue to be obedient. I pray that this lesson helps someone, that we become better Christians. Let's become better Christians. Um, God gives us every day is another chance to get it right, another day to, to just um, do better. Let's do better. Time is running short. We got to do better. God is talking to us. Jesus is talking to us. He's letting everybody know. You continue in your sins, you're living in your sins, and you will, you will see death. And death is separation from God. It's not the physical, it's the spiritual. You don't want to be spiritually separated from God because you will be forever separated from God. So may God bless you and keep you as my prayer.